Hey everybody, I'm Eric, N1JUR, and today we're going to dive into uh, something that I've gotten a request from a few folks from a previous video I had done on uh, Hamshack uh, Hotline uh, shuttering their uh, system and service at the end of uh, August of this year, 2025. In those comments, a few of you asked me to put together a video on how you can set up your Hamshack Hotline phone with Hams over IP. Uh, so I'm gonna dive into that today. It's a real simple configuration um, and uh, only takes a couple of uh, tweaks uh, on your existing phone to do. Uh, if you don't have a Hams over IP account, uh, definitely head over to their website. Uh, the link will be uh, in the description below and uh, get your account set up on that. And then when you're ready uh, to provision your phone, you can easily follow these steps uh, again to changing uh, some of the settings uh, for your purpose or whatever you need to do. Now, just a couple of caveats. Obviously, since uh, I have a sidecar here with my phone um, and all of my buttons programmed for all the folks that were on uh, Hamshack Hotline, you're also going to have to go in and change that configuration. So I'll just lightly uh, touch on that. Um, and hopefully uh, this will be a, a quick, uh, easy tutorial for you guys to follow and uh, we'll make things simple. And again, uh, this video is just something I'm doing as a follow up to uh, my subscribers, but you can always head over to Hams over IP. They have a great wiki over there uh, and it explains 100% how to uh, set up all the stuff I'm going to talk about today. So. Let's uh, dive over to the console here and get to this. Like I said, you're, if you've never set up uh, your phone before, I would head over to Hams Over IP uh, and check that website out. There's great tutorials. They'll walk you through getting everything configured and how to set up uh, your phone for an existing um, service. Because my phone uh, was already primarily provisioned with uh, Hamshack Hotline, I had set up a second extension on the phone uh, that allowed me to uh, provision my Hamshack uh, or Hams over IP uh, extension uh, on the same phone. Uh, very simple to do, no problems. Uh, and the only challenge obviously uh, was just trying to make sure that my sidecar with all of my programmable buttons um, behaved the way it should and uh, you know everything works. So. What you need to do first and foremost is um, if your phone's obviously plugged into your network, you're going to need to head over to the phone. Uh, there is a quick menu setting in the phone here. And so let's dive over to uh, my view here of the phone. I'm going to walk it through really quickly. So if you've never um, accessed, say, your home network router firewall, it's going to be some of the similar cam configuration. What you need to do is obviously first identify what your phone's IP address is. And it's a really simple way. So you just basically from the menu, you're going to hit the little, and again, this is for a Cisco SP525 uh, 500 series. A lot of similar phones are like uh, some of this configuration, although these Cisco phones are quite old. Uh, they don't even produce uh, any longer. So if you do happen to have one and it's unlocked, uh, you can definitely turn it into a Hams over IP phone if you wanted to. Um, but all you do is from your menu here, you're going to press your, um, function button here to go into the settings uh, and information dashboard. And then while you're doing that, you're going to scroll down to status and then you're going to hit the little check mark button in the middle and then go down to network status. And in the network status window, it'll tell you uh, via uh, its interface what the IP address is. Now, again, everybody's IP address is going to be a little different. So uh, whatever your phone says is uh, what you want to write down. And then once you've done that, uh, you're going to head over to your browser and in your browser, um, you're going to enter in HTTP um, and then your address like you saw it on the phone. You'll get to the main window here that we're looking at um, currently, and this is for my phone. Uh, and then you'll see a bunch of little buttons at the top uh, labeled attendant console and everything else in purple um, that you see on the screen. All you're going to do is you're going to click uh, the admin login. And if you know your password to your phone, if you haven't set a password, I should say, then 
you should be able to just click admin, go right into the admin interface and be able to configure uh, the phone. Uh, you want to make sure you're not in the basic settings, uh, but you're in the advanced settings uh, because it will help um, some of your configuration. But uh, either of those options will allow you to configure the extension as you need it to be uh, configured for hams over IP. Now, a couple of things in my view here, you'll see that you have several extensions. And so each of those extensions, as I'm pointing out here in the upper view, match each of these five line buttons. And so if you remember in the old world of phones, uh, you could have multiple lines uh, on a phone and each of those were a unique number. Uh, same thing kind of applies to in the voice over IP world, but those buttons are pretty configurable. So you can do uh, pretty much anything you want on them. Uh, but uh, for our purposes in setting up uh, hams over IP, what you're gonna do is you're going to click the tab for extension one. And so a uh, couple of things you're gonna need uh, from the hams over IP website is first and foremost, uh, when you go there, you're gonna need to know your extension number uh, and you're gonna need to know your password. And both of those uh, should have been issued to you. One tip I can offer is that uh, you can head over to hams over IP, log into the support center. And if you generated at least one ticket request for setting up your account um, and getting your uh, extension provision, I guarantee probably under your old ticket archives, there's the details there for that information. Um, and then that way you don't have to open up another support ticket to find uh, what your password might be. So uh, all you're gonna do is take that bit of information and it's basically the proxy address, uh, which I'll get into in location, um, your uh, user extension, which is your user ID and the password that they provisioned for you. So what you're gonna do is uh, in the list here, you're gonna tap uh, extension one and you should be able to see all of the fields in an editable state. These shouldn't be grayed out for you at all. If they are grayed out, you haven't either entered your password uh, for your administrator um, account or you, um, you know, just uh, been uh, logged out for whatever reason. So once you get back into this, you should be able to see all these screens. Um, like I said, there are a couple of things on uh, this setting that they want to make sure that you have set up. So in order to enable the line, the first thing you want to do is set your line enabled to yes. Um, and if it's set to no, then that line will become inactive and won't uh, auto provision or won't connect to the uh, source uh, that you have defined here in the list. You can leave all of most of these other settings uh, alone, but you want to make sure NAT mapping enabled is always set to yes and the keep alive is set to yes. These are both for um, allowing your phone to constantly send out a hello so it stays connected to the network um, and uh, stays updated. Um, those are required uh, for most uh, VoIP phones in general, um, but also helps, uh, you know, in your home network, connecting these phones uh, back to uh, an internet um, service. Sit port, leave alone. Don't worry about the debug option. You don't want to turn debugging on. It will, uh, you know, obviously add some overhead. Call feature settings, unless they ask you to change that, don't touch any of those settings. Just leave them as uh, they should be. The next field you're going to focus on is proxy and registration. Now, again, with your credentials, you're going to enter in your proxy address here in the field. You can cut and paste it in or type it in. Just make sure there's no spaces uh, and everything is uh, exactly the way you see it on the paper. Um, I copied it from my extension two before to extension one because I am removing Hamshack hotline uh, from my settings. Um, so I will not need those details. Um, there's no alternative proxy unless they give you one to define. Um, most of the time they're just gonna give you one. Uh, because you can really only connect your phone to one system. And then um, you want to make sure all of these values, yes, for register enabled, your ex registration expiration uh, is just a timeout option on the system and really, uh, you know, is something that uh, you uh, want to just leave as default. Um, you can not worry about these other two fields because those are field defi uh, definitive for Cisco world. Um, subscriber information is only the next field that you're going to really have to worry about. Um, so in display name, um, in the Hamshack hotline world, it used to be displayed as your extension number. Um, if you happen to edit this settings specifically and replacing them with Hamshack over IP, the fields you're going to change is obviously the proxy address. Um, like if we go over here real quick, I'll just show you my old extension data from Hamshack hotline. Uh, you'll see that in that um, photo, uh, there is 
uh, all of my Hamshack hotline details set up and you'll see it's a different server. Um, my display name is my extension number um, and I also have uh, my password is a different password. So um, with that, uh, you can definitely know um, you're connecting to one service or another. Um, so what you'll do is just basically change those field values to the ones that we're changing them to for Hams over IP. So and once you do that, you put in the display name. Now, this is a little different um, than what um, Hemshack Hotline had done. They used to just do your extension number here. This is just what it displays on the phone. So if you tap over here, and if I just back out of the phone uh, options here really quickly, you'll see that even though um, my extension number shows 100, 121, whatever the display name is, this is just something uh, that's kind of... Um, free form for whatever reason it doesn't do anything to connect to the system the real um two fields that are required is obviously having the proper extension number and having your proper password and uh this password automatically gets grayed out when it gets saved so um you don't have to worry about it being displayed and then once you're done uh you can leave all of the audio codec stuff alone you're just going to click submit and you'll watch the system reboot boot menu showing that it's refreshing. In a second or two, it should be back and provisioned. With Hamshack Hotline, you're gonna obviously have a whole bunch of extensions if you set up in your configuration. And so I'm gonna show you a couple of things here of how and what I did have configured. So I have a sidecar. So this little box here is an additional sidecar. You've probably seen receptionists in uh, business office complexes have these things. They're just all like pre-programmed one touch button. Um, so what that means to you is you're probably going to have to go in here and find all of your Hamshack hotline extensions. You know the appropriate person's new extension. Um, you can find that. Uh, the one thing I would suggest if you go over Hams over IP website, you can head over to their phone book and we'll load it here real quick. You can find all of those extensions. They've broken it out in a really good layout. I'm very happy to see that you can easily sort through this stuff. Um, and confirm uh, everything you need and copy and paste this value into this uh, field here. So I can remove his existing hot shack, ham shack hotline, change it here as well so it's an actual extension number, and then uh, that'll update this value here on the sidecar. Now, that's how you would uh, update your attendant console. The same thing goes for uh, those unit keys. If you have only just the phone itself, you can program these five unit keys I would say uh, if you haven't been over, check out their wiki at Hamshack, uh, Hams over IP. It's a great resource. Uh, they've been contributing to it. And if you've got any questions uh, or, you know, uh, you run into any problems setting up or provisioning your phone, obviously reach out to these guys, but uh, feel free to leave a comment down in the comments below. And uh, I'll be glad to hopefully help you out and get your reprovision. So um, that's how you transition uh, from one service to another. And uh, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of a work and a little bit of configuration. Uh, but once you do it, uh, again, your phone will then be back. Thanks again for watching. Uh, uh, make sure you always like and subscribe. And with that, 7.3 and POTA on, guys.